All right, so a gopher hits a golf ball with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. Knowing that the fairway slopes downward at an average angle of 5 degrees, determine the distance d between the gopher and point b where the ball first lands. Now there are, I thought of three different ways of solving this problem, okay? The physics behind it, behind all three ways is exactly the same. It's just the approach, mathematical approach that we take to actually solve it. So I'm actually going to break this down into three videos so that you have the three different ways in that, so that you can see not only that um, there are multiple ways you can solve a problem when you approach it, but also that perhaps the way, the first way it comes to mind might not be the easiest or the best. So spending an extra minute or an extra um, trying to get outside the box a bit might be worth it because it's going to make your life so much easier. All right. So what is going on here? Well, let's first start start by drawing. Uh, let's start by drawing this triangle that we see that happens between the gopher. So let me go ahead and do red here on point eight where the gopher is hitting the ball. And we're going to go downwards here. And then we can close it off with point B. It might be too far down. Let's try to go here. Boom. Okay. So let's see this triangle. Let me close it off here so we can. Okay. So you see that triangle there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, not copy, just drag it down so we can see it without the mess of the drawing. Okay. So what is that triangle? That triangle has B on the vertex over here. We have point A on the top here. And we have a point that I don't need to call anything because we're not going to use for anything. The angle is five degrees. Okay. So. Over here, we have an angle of five degrees. We have a an angle of 90 degrees over here, right? <clears throat> and what else? And I'm going to call, well, we have the distance D, and distance D is this distance here, right, from point, point A to B. I'm gonna go ahead and call, give some other names to the other sides of this triangle. I'm gonna call the um, this distance here from A to, let's just give O as its name so we have. So A to O, I'm gonna call H for height, okay? And also I'm gonna call Z, this distance from point O to point B. Okay, just giving names to the side of the triangle that we see there. The ball leaves point A, travels upwards in a parabola, and then lands. Oops, I completely missed. My drawing's completely off there. It goes on a parabola motion and then it hits point B. Right? How do I know it's a parabola motion? Well, let's look at the forces to see how this is going to behave. And if we look only at the ball, let's go ahead and draw the ball. Okay, so this is a golf ball here. And the, the forces acting on this ball. Are exactly the same as in the uh, monkey problem. If you guys haven't seen the monkey problem, I encourage you to do so. That's my favorite problem for sure. I'll be sure to li leave a little link popping up on your screen. Um, so this is a golf ball. If you guys don't get my drawings, which I don't expect you to, golf ball. Yeah, and the golf ball is being hit at a with a velocity v naught, and this v naught makes a 25 at yeah, 25 degree angle with the horizontal and what are the forces acting on this v naught? well as soon as it leaves the uh, golf club yeah as soon as the impact of the golf club is finished the only force acting on this golf ball is gravity as long as we're discarding or disregarding um the resistance of air right so the only thing that we have there is gravity so we have something like this so we could redraw this this is equivalent to and that's once again my beautiful golf ball here okay and let me just decompose that velocity so this could be the equivalent of having a initial velocity in the y direction an initial velocity on the x direction, like on these directions that I just drew, and the gravity pulling downwards. And so this is the situation of the ball on time equals zero. So this is at time equals zero. As time elapses, what we know will happen is um, this force here will decrease this velocity all the way until it reaches zero. And then it reaches zero, it's going to start increasing the velocity downwards, right? And that's why we know there will be a parabola motion in the uh, when the uh, ball leaves the golf club. The other thing that we know is that there's no forces on this direction trying to stop the ball from moving forward or forces on this direction increasing the velocity as, it's, as it goes on the horizontal, right? So that means that that velocity v o x is going to just stay the whole time constant. So we can write this as um, the acceleration on the x direction is nil, right? None. And the acceleration on the y direction is just gravity. And I'm going to consider gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, there is a caveat here, right? The caveat is that we need to determine what is our positives and our negatives, because you see we have things pointing in different directions there. So we can go ahead, and I'm going to do that here on the drawing so that we have it always on the point we're going to be looking at. Okay, so I'm going to say that upwards is positive, and to the right is positive, making downwards and to the left negative. Okay. So my gravity is a negative acceleration, so I need to be sure that I have that negative whenever I'm putting the uh, g there, right? So that acceleration. My v y and my vox, they are positives. And actually, I can calculate them, right? Because of this situation here, what I know is that if I do the sine of 25, that has to be equal to voy divided by v0. And v0, we know 
it's been given right, it's um, 50, I think, yeah, 50 meters per second. Right, so if that's the case, so this is 50 meters per second. Then if that's the case, then therefore, V O Y equals 21.13 meters per second. Okay, and it's positive because of what we determined in the beginning. And I can do the same thing for V O X, right? So cosine of 25 equals V O X divided by V naught, and we know V naught is 50 meters per second, and therefore my V O X is positive 45.31. Okay, so what do we know? We know that the velocity, initial velocity, horizontal velocity is going to be this one, and this is not going to change, all right? From when it leaves point A all the way until it reaches point B, the velocity of on the horizontal direction is 45.31. On the y direction, however, it's going to start as 21.13, but then as time elapses, we're going to have this acceleration slowing it down all the way until it reaches zero, and then when it reaches zero, it's going to start to accelerate downwards, right? Cool. Now let's solve this question. I'm going to put down some equations for us to use uh, to solve. The first one is if we just look on the horizontal. Direction, what are we going to have? Well, velocity, again, velocity is how uh, distance changes with time. So therefore, the how much it's going to travel on the horizontal if I integrate with respect to time. My velocity on the x direction is constant, don't forget that. So you know, I do v dt, and I integrate from 0 to t, t being the time in which it reaches point b. Let's just put point b here so we remember that's what we're talking about. And I have to integrate over here from x, and we're going to go from x naught to x, x being the point where when it reaches um, point b, right? Let's put this one. World downwards, okay? So when I integrate this, what I'm going to have is, because V O X is constant, right, it's going to be V O X times the time that it takes, which equals my delta X, X minus X O, okay? The distance that it travels horizontally, right, so the distance that it travels from here to here on a horizontal path is exactly what I called Z, right? So exactly the bottom of that triangle there, correct? So if that's the case, I'm going to, I can just say that delta X over there, this X minus xo, which is just the distance it traveled in the x direction, that's just z, that's just the name that I gave to it. Okay, so now I have an equation that relates z on that triangle, the red triangle, my v o x that I know, and my time that I don't know. I don't know how long it takes for the ball to reach the uh, point b. Okay, so this is the first equation that I have. All right, so what else can we um, think of? Vertically, what's going to happen? What's going to happen vertically? Okay, so vertically, we are going to have the, we can go straight ahead into saying that y equals y naught, uh, plus v o y t minus g t squared over 2. Okay, we can go straight into that. But if we don't want to memorize, we can do the always the same logic, right? So you can always start with the basics. What is the what are the basics? The acceleration is how velocity changes with time. We're only looking on the y direction, don't forget that. Okay. So I can integrate, therefore, if I integrate a dt from 0 to the time at which it reaches point b. I'm trying to go a bit fast on this because so we did plenty of these problems already. If he, I can integrate from my initial velocity. And then the final velocity, this velocity here is the velocity when the, the velocity in the y direction when it reaches point B. Uh, what's going to happen here on this integral is that because my acceleration is constant and it's because of gravity, this leaves the integral just integrating in respect to t. So that's going to be a in the y direction t equals, and over here I'm going to have v minus v naught. Right? So I can integrate one more time because I can, where I have velocity, I can sub that in by velocity is just how my distance changes with time. Right, so if I integrate that one more time, and in respect to dt, well, let's do everything, no point on, just skipping steps, ay t dt equals dy minus boy dt, right? And I can integrate one more time. Again, I'm going from 0 to time, that time is when it reaches point b. Here I'm going from y naught to y, and here I'm going from 0 to time when it reaches point b. Okay, so what's going to happen here? I'm going to have ay t squared over 2 equals y minus y naught. And this is y when it reaches point b. And over here, v o y t. Okay, so that's the equation that we had. Let me start over here. This one here, I said we could start straight with that one. Okay, what is this equation saying? Well, let's uh, let me rewrite this equation in another way. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this as delta y. Okay, so the difference in y from point a to b. So delta y, and let's go ahead and do from a to b, just to remind ourselves. Delta y equals v o y t plus a y t squared over 2. Okay, and what is delta y from a to b? Let's go back to our problem and let's evaluate that quickly. That is the difference in the y direction, right? So the difference in the y direction from the initial point and the final point. So if my ball went from here to here, my delta y would be from here to here, right? That would be my delta y there. Since my ball went from a to b, my delta y is something like that, right? That's my delta y. So it's a vector that leaves my point a here and finds my point B, only in the vertical direction, right? Note that my delta Y 
in magnitude is exactly equal to what I called h. There's just one caveat, and that caveat is that this has to be negative, right? It has to be negative, right? Because it's pointing downwards. And we said that downwards is negative. Okay? So, where I have delta y, I'm going to sub that in for minus h. Why negative? Because it's going downwards, right? The, the vector is pointing downwards. And why h? Because that's the same magnitude, same distance that was covered by the delta y. Okay, so the equation becomes v what, t, and where I have my acceleration in the y direction, we know that is gravity. And we know gravity is also negative, pointing downwards, right? So gravity, t squared over 2. Okay, so now I have an equation that relates um, the time that it takes for the ball to land and the distance h that it travels. Right? What can we do from now, from this point onwards? Well, we have too many unknowns, right? Let me go ahead and call, did I call the other equation 1? Yeah, let's call this one equation 2. Okay, so we have too many unknowns. What are the unknowns that we have? Well, just on this triangle here that I drew, we have three unknowns. Z, D, H, and uh, that's it. <laughs> H, Z, and D, right? The other unknown that we have is time, right? We don't know how, how much, how much, um, how long it takes for the ball to arrive on point B. So we have four unknowns, and for that we would need four equations. We have one equation here that relates um, time and Z. We have another one here that relates H and time. Okay, so we have two, and we have plenty of equations on that triangle there that relate these guys among themselves, right? So one of them is obviously, if I take the sine of 5 degrees, that will be h divided by d. Okay, so we can call this equation 3. And another one is the cosine of 5 degrees equals uh, dz divided by h. Right, so we can call this equation 4. Now, now that we have four equations and four unknowns, so it's just a matter of algebra now to solve it. So this is the point in which there's different ways you can go about solving it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the fast play on this video, and then on the next video I'll show you a bit more a, bit, uh, a way that's a bit more complicated. All right. So the trick here is that if you, if you go ahead and do this, and this is what we're going to do in the next video using these four equations, this is going to involve a lot of math. But there's one thing we can do which is quite um, interesting, which is we can actually take the tangent. If we take the tangent, okay, then we don't have d anymore as one of the things floating around, right? Because the tangent in this case is just going to be h over z. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll solve the other two equations that I have. I'll solve one for h and I'll solve one for z. Okay, let me go ahead and copy this and I use this equation here to minimize the effort that I need to put in. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this one and I want to I want to be subbing in equation one two to get rid of the h and the z. So note that they are already in terms of the things that we want. Right? The only thing we need to be aware of is that we have the negative there. Okay, so this is the equation 1, this is equation 2, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sub in. So tangent of 5 has to be equal to z equals v o x v naught x v naught x times the time that it takes for v. Okay, I'm going to see that as 1, and that's going to be our z there. And h is, if I do the negative of that, I'm going to have, um, sorry, g t squared minus v o y t divided by Okay, so now note that we have an equation that is only, the only unknown is time, all right? And as long as, this is something that we need to remember, as long as my time is different than zero, then I can divide like I'm doing, right? Because if this is zero, this would, we'd have a problem there, all right? So my time is not zero, and we can check that later when we do the other way. We can check that's the case, okay? Um, okay, so now we have a simple equation to solve, right? Because we, we have um, v naught y, we have v naught x, we have g, we have everything we can possibly need. Okay, so I can solve this by doing where do I want to go? There's no problem with that one down here. Okay, so that means that the tangent of five five Celsius times V O X plus V O Y should be equal to G T over two. And if that's the case, I can keep going over here. If that's the case, then T is equals the tangent of five v o x plus v o y times 2 divided by gravity. And so we solved it for time, tangent of 5. We have v o x, we have v o y, we have g, we have 2 is a constant we have. So this becomes 5.12 seconds. So this is the time it takes for the ball to reach point B. Now, there's one thing that we need to always keep in mind that whenever we do this, okay, whenever we divide like we did here, divide the unknown, 
we're missing one of the answers, right? Because we would have two times because of the parabola, we would have two times in which that happens. If you are savvy about physics, you know that the parabola is going to go like the drawing is showing. So let me go ahead and do this the thick fellow here. Okay, so something like that. And what the times, the time we would find if we do it uh, mathematically would be the time in which it crosses B, of course, and then obviously the time in which it crosses the same point down below, right? The, on the y direction, but back uh, be, behind the gopher. Right, and that's going to happen when time is negative. Okay? So mathematically, it makes sense. Physically, it does not. So if you understand that, then you can be pretty comfortable doing that division there that we just did. But if not, we can jump into the next video and look at how to solve this. Um, the question was the question was not um, what is time. The question was, was what is d, right? And the equation that we have for d is none of these. The equation that we have for d is or the equation we have for d. We can pick any of these, right? So we can do the cosine one or the sine one. Doesn't matter because now we can solve every single thing, right? Oh, that was stupid. This doesn't have uh, the D. We have the tangent one. Here's the tangent one. Here. This one doesn't have the D either. This one has a D. Why did I not put the D here? Cosine is over D. So this isn't correct. Sorry about that. Cool. So that means if I want to find D, I just need to do Z divided by the cosine of 5. Z, if you guys remember, is just VOX. Where's my equation? There it is. Vox times t. So Vox times t divided by the cosine of 5 degrees. So all things that we know now, right? Um, Vox, if you guys recall, is 45.31. t we just found it out to be 5.12 seconds. And cosine of 5 is known. Unit-wise, we have meters per second on the velocity. And multiply that by seconds, so we're going to have an answer in meters. And this turns out to be 230. 2.7 meters. Okay, so this is one of the ways to do it. So I'll make another video with another way.